My father had had scarlet fever and that had turned into some type of heart condition and had to be hospitalized in California around the same time that his father lost his job and had to move from California, take the family from California to Kentucky and leave him alone as a 10 year old to convalesce for a year in California. I was born in San Francisco. And uh, when I was a kid, I was put into a hospital in San Francisco while my family moved to Kentucky. I had uh, rheumatic heart, a children's heart disease, or at least so they told me. Anyway, being immersed into Kentucky all of a sudden was really a shock to me. I think that's what I was writing about in a deep way when I wrote The Man Who Fell to Earth. He awoke in a taxi with the woman. She was shaking him gently. Where do you want to go, she said. Where's your home? He stared at her. I, I don't really know. And I think that experience threw me into being a kind of lonely, scared kid, and I did a lot of reading, and I, I traced my literariness to that part of my life. Uh, I wasn't allowed to do sports because of the heart disease, and I spent a lot of my time sitting in a chair reading books until I got old enough to go to the pool room, and then that changed my life in another way. I suppose I grew up, became, I learned how to swear and how to swagger in the pool room and it sort of replaced for me that part in my boy's life that is taken care of for other boys by playing football, basketball, whatever. When he came to Lexington, he didn't fit in, and he never fit in until he found a pool table in Toby Cavanaugh. And once he found a pool table in Toby Cavanaugh, he spent almost all his time at the Cavanaugh's house, and they were wealthy, and Walter loved that. And so he was very happy with that portion of his life. Toby Cavanaugh was Walter Tevis' best friend. They would go down in the basement and play pool. He taught Walter Tevis to play pool, and then they would sneak down to the Phoenix Hotel to see what I call the sort of grand old days of Lexington. So these two boys from Chevy Chase would kind of wander down to get a taste of life on the other side, and I think that must have really appealed to a young Walter Tevis because it appeared again and again in his work and in all its forms. The Huster came from my standing around in pool rooms when I was a kid and when later when I was in college, watching all night games of pool where guys would be playing for 500 bucks a game or something like that. And the thrill, the excitement of that for me was just enormous. Pool uh, as a game uh, in both a factual and metaphoric way. I'm curious to know what its fascination is for you. I don't know the source of the fascination for that game, of that game for me entirely. It meant an awful lot to me. For a long time, I really wanted to be a first-rate pool player. I, I thought it was enormously important. I practiced every day. I liked it. I got involved in the whole quality of the game, the rolling of the balls, the feel of pool rooms, the whole somewhat seamy side of life that you got into in pool rooms. It had a tremendous fascination for me. He studied some pretty serious literature and got two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's from the University of Kentucky and most significantly studied under A.B. Bud Guthrie, who had won a Pulitzer Prize. And then ended up teaching in Kentucky as well, even after he graduated. Met my mother in Kentucky, so a large part of his life, formative years then were living in Kentucky. I first met Walter Tevis my sophomore school year at Carlisle High School in 1952, as 1952-53 school year. And he came as our brand new English and literature teacher. And at the same time, Jamie Griggs was hired as the brand new home economics teacher. And they met, and that was in September of 1952. Evidently, they clicked. And my mother repeated to me that they had a very passionate relationship. I always had an elementary glibness uh, with pen and paper and knew that I could do that sort of thing better than most people, but didn't really consider making a profession out of it until I graduated from college and became a high school teacher in Kentucky and found myself in kind of a, a economic deadlock, making a minuscule salary for a lot of work. Tavis's early biography reads like something out of Dickens. I mean, his, his family abandoned him in a hospital in San Francisco and at some point he gets plucked out of there and dropped into Kentucky. Uh, it, it doesn't take a Freudian analyst to wonder what that has to do with the man who fell to earth 
and these uh, novels that have to do with some kind of search for, for home. I'm so excited now that his, that his work is getting a second read. I have so much pride uh, for the work that he did. And then going back and reading all of his books, I didn't read them when I was younger, when I was a teenager. So now I've read them all. Um, and I know him as a writer and I am just floored. I think anybody who knew Walter uh, realized that he was one of those writers who also had a capacity for self-deprecation and so much so that he probably never knew how good he was. Enjoy more Kentucky life. Subscribe now.